Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this beehive card. I'm going to change the colour scheme very very slightly. This one is Daffodil Delight and I'm going to be using crushed curry. So to start off with I'm going to show you the card pieces you're going to need. Um, unfortunately um, YouTube have changed things around slightly um, for, with their editing tool and it means that I can't put the sizes on the screen um, but they will all be in the box below. Okay so to start off with you need a card base that is eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches scored and folded at four and one eighth which is 21 by 14.5 centimeters scored and folded at 10.5 then you'll need two pieces of basic black cardstock which measure four inches by five and five eighths inches which is 10.25 by 14.25 centimeters you will need one piece of whisper white cardstock which measures three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches which is 10 by 14 centimeters. You will need some designer series paper and I have taken this from the Serene Scenery designer series paper stack which will actually be retiring um, at the end of this month on the 31st of May. Um, and this measures three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches. You will need a piece of crushed curry which measures three inches by three inches which is approximately eight by eight centimeters. Sorry I should have said that that piece is centimeters ten by fourteen centimeters. And then for right with these three sayings we've got these little bits and pieces here and I will tell you the sizes of them. Whisper White, there's one that's 7 eighths of an inch by 5 eighths of an inch which is 2.2 by 1.6 centimetres. There's another piece of Whisper White that's a quarter of an inch by 1 inch which is 0.6 of a centimetre by 2.5 of a centimetre. Then there's another piece of Whisper White which is a quarter of an inch by 1 and 3 quarter inches which is 0.6 of a centimetre by 4.4 centimetres. And then on the crushed curry pieces, there's one that is one inch by three quarters of an inch, which is 2.5 by 1.9 centimetres. There's another piece which is three eighths of an inch by one and one eighth of an inch, which is 0.9 by 2.8 centimetres. And then the third piece is three eighths of an inch by one and seven eighths inches, which is 0.9 centimeters by 4.5 centimeters. So that's all of those little pieces. And then you'll need a piece of Whisper White for the two B's on the front, and that measures approximately two inches by three inches, which is five by eight centimeters and you just need a little scrap of basic black just for that little piece there which is where I've cut that out there. Right so we'll start by doing our stamping first. Let's get my scrap of paper over. I'll do these three sentiments I will do the two B's on there and then I will do two B's on this bit which is the bit that goes on the inside. Now stamp sets that I'm going to use, the B's are from Dragonfly Dreams which I'm very pleased to say is being carried forward into the new catalogue so this is the one that I'm going to be using. And then for the sentiments, I just had a look around at all the stamp sets I had just to find little sentiments that are sort of bee orientated 
for example this one is just because that one you're so sweet honey and what have you and then you're sweet as can be unfortunately the three stamp sets that I've chosen are all retiring so there's pun intended which was a hostess set and that one has just because um, another one I did use happy B day and that one says be mine um, bear hugs I got the you're so sweet and the shooting star you're my sweet honeybee so I haven't checked to see what is available in the new catalogue but there may well be something that is suitable or you could just choose whatever you wanted on here so let's do the sentiments first these are very very small as you can see and I have actually got them done over there and layered just in case I mess up here let's just move those two out of the way now this one is just because this is the easiest one and I'm using um, black archival ink I'll see how far down I can bring this without getting my head in the camera this is why I pre-did them because I know that I can't lean too far forward there we go I made a bit of a mess there I do get a second go that's better there we go so that would be all right just because So this one, the smaller one, you're so sweet, I'm just going to stamp it here to remind myself, yep that's straight if I keep it like that, so make sure this piece is straight and as low as I can get it, but I must remember not to tip it too far forward because I've got the little black marks there where the ink's gone on top of the stamp. Let's see how we get on with this one. Well, that's not too bad. Not brilliant, but let me give myself one more go on this one. Just make sure I stay on the screen with this. You're so sweet. There we go, that's quite good as well. Although they're very, very tiny, they're not that difficult to do. And what's this one? Uh, you're as sweet as can be, so it's that way. And just test it here as well to see how straight this is. Oh, it's not too bad. Just tilt it up slightly. Okay, and that's probably as low as I can go. Not too bad, is it? Oh, it's a bit wonky. Not too wonky to worry, though. Okay, so that's fine. Now I'm going to do two bees on here. Where did I do these? Because I know they fitted in nicely. So it's one there, one there. Okay. with that and then two on here now the thing is with the bees they do need to be fussy cut there is a die 
but it cuts out and um, cuts out bits and pieces on the wings which is not the look that I'm going for so I'm just going to give those a couple of minutes to dry while, while I just pop these onto the yellow layers, the uh, crushed curry layers Turn them over to the wrong side and I'll use Tombow. I think that might be a little bit clogged. Oh no, maybe not. Okay, so just a little bit of Tombow. These are so small that it only needs the smallest amount because when you press them down it's going to spread all out so it will be fine and that one I think I've done a little bit too much so I'm going to blot that on there and then fold it over so that I don't forget that I've done that move that one up out of the way as well There's that one. If I'm successful with these, it means I've got the ones that I've already done ready for this card. It means I can do another one. Oops. There we go. That's that one. And then this one. These are very fiddly, I wouldn't want to do this too often. But it just suits this card, really suits this card. Right, okay, so that's all of that. So let me um, show you how I colour these. I'm going to do this one um, because I need to actually use this sheet. Right, I have my crushed curry marker pen. So I'm just going to colour where the body is exposed and that little line there there we go, that's that Just going over it two or three times to make sure it comes up quite dark. There we go, so that's okay. I'll do one of these. And that band across there. There we go, that's quite dark. And then for the wings, I do them grey with the uh, smoky slate but what I try and do is just one line I try not to go over because I'm trying to get it to look more silver I don't want them um, to be very very heavy there we go that's fine really doesn't take too long. This is the easy bit. In fact, the whole card is easy really. I mean, the way, when you see how the um, beehive is done, that's easy too. Right, okay. So once I've done that, then I'll bring my Wink of Stella pen in and I go all over 
first of all the body and then the wings I don't know if that's showing up on camera or not let me see All right, let me just quickly do these two. go so that's all of those and just to fussy cut this one and it really is quite quite easy I cut up onto the black line on this except when I go around the antennae and I also try and leave a little bit of white as I go around the body here because I think this image looks so furry it looks very tactile that is just the absolute skill of stamping up with the quality of their stamps and when you're doing um, fussy cutting like this it's always easier if you move the paper rather than your scissors. Okay, so when I get close to the antennae, just turn it around, cut that one off, and then come around the corner. Just turn it so that you've got a little rounded bit there. over the top of his head and start turning again for the antennae around the corner there we go wasn't too painful was it I think you can see that shining now, can't you? That's much better. Right, so now we've done that. That's all our stamping and images together. So we've only got to do the um, beehive now. So the way I do this, let's bring my big shot up first. To get the initial shape, this oval, I use the layering oval dies, this one, this set here, and I use the largest one, so that's number eight. The larger the die, the larger the number. And I don't need the whole amount. Okay, so what I do is, because I've obviously judged, I've measured what size I need and the 3x3 three three is good. So I put my die on like that, bearing in mind that the cutting edge is on the inside of the oval. Pop that through. And then I want a curved base on here, I don't want that straight line. So what I do is with the cutting edge down, I pop it on like that, judge that I've got about the same amount of gap here and here, 
and then I just slide it down so that that is just a tad above the top curve. You don't want it touching because if it touches, because that is the cutting edge, you'll find that you'll cut yourself a funny shape there. So you need that. Okay, so that's my beehive shape. Now before I move on, I'm going to do the little doorway and that's for this and for that, let's move that one out of the way for that one I'm actually using the butterflies thin lit dies and I'm using this one here because what I wanted was I wanted an oval where the sides started to come inwards which this fits the bill beautifully. On one side it's a little bit straight. That one curves nicely but that's a bit straight. But it's fine. I'm not unduly fussy about this. I'm going to have to turn this this way so I can see which way it's going. Okay, so that's the door. If you keep it like that you know your door's got to be straight up. And then I just line that part of the wing onto the edge and then once I'm happy that that's straight that can just fit in. Obviously the edge isn't going to be quite right but that's easily sorted out. Okay so I have that. Won't be needing that a little bit, that can come off. Okay, so pop that one on there. So now I need to do my dry embossing on here. Now the embossing folder is one of our dynamic embossing folders called Hexagons. And because this is so very, very much thicker than our normal embossing folders we do it very very slightly differently so what you need to do is you need your normal platform your stamping up uh, your big shot um, platform without the thin die adapter and you're going to need one cutting mat as well so before you emboss this you need to spray it with water now obviously I'm not going to spray this so you can see me doing it but I will bring it back so that you can see how much I've done and hopefully you'll be able to hear that I will do one spray that side and one spray that side I hope the camera will pick that up that's one that side and that's one that side on this it's gone on this side on that one, that side on that one, but that's okay because it is on both sides, if you know what I mean. That that one does that bit, that one does that bit. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just pop it into the embossing folder, sort of straight, pop it on there, one cutting mat, Crank it through. And look at the amazing embossing on that. Double sided, you could use the other side if you wanted to. But isn't that stunning? Right, okay, so that I think is everything done. We just need to put our card together now. So let's move the big shot out of the way. Let's pop that there. Right. So I'm going to put a layer of black on the top here. 
quite often when I fold my cards I get a little ridge there as a actually gone fluffy today as well um, but there's this side is a tad shorter than the other side and what I do if that happens is I always put the shorter side at the back um, it just gives an extra little grip to open it right for this you could use any adhesive that's your preference black layer then I need the um, designer series paper That's it, that's good. Now I'm going to put the black on the inside. I'm going to turn it round upside down. I found that I can get it lined up a lot easier because I'm right handed and I don't know if left handed people find it easier to do it the right way up or like my mum says I'm cat handed but it works there we go there's that one so now I'm going to put the these on the inside one of these days I know that I'm going to be doing this and I'm going to put the um, this sheet on upside down if I do it on screen I'll leave it so that you can see it I won't cut it out <laughs> up the right way. Good, got that. Right, now for the sentiment, let's bring back the ones I've just done. I'm going to do, let's have my silicone mat over because these are such tiny bits. So I want the big one first, or at least the long one first. Just judging that. So that's okay. Now with my beehive, I'm going to put my door on first. Looks like a bit of fluffy bits on there. Take those off. Now when I put this on, it's going to come off the bottom and I need to cut it so that it's nicely rounded. So let's just make that like that. Just pop that on so that it looks straight. And make sure you've got a little bit off on both sides so that you can trim it. Okay. And when you trim it, turn it over and do it from the back. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to pop this on using dimensionals. And I think I only used four for this. I'm 
Mm. Maybe I should have used five. Well, I'm using five this time. So pop that into position. sentiment next pop that one on and I'll get that one ready as well because I'll do that straight away so just because it comes round about here And then, you're so sweet, it's over here somewhere. Now with the um, bees, I just want to curl their wings up. I only did one, didn't I? So I'll bring one of these other ones in. There we go, that's that one. these I'm going to use dimensionals again and I'll use one right at the bottom oh I've just noticed my uh, jumper's the same colour as a beehive <laughs> wow right I'm just taking little bits here for the head of the B. I think that might be a bit too long. Well, maybe not. There we go. So they fit on nicely. So we have one round about here. And the other one would have actually on the bee's nest, the beehive. And there we go, that's today's card. Um, the first card that I made in this um, set was this one here. But I have changed certain things. One of the things was on here, on the top of this bee, I put a black heat embossed die cut of the bee. Um, let's see if I can show you the um, die for this one, it comes from Detailed Dragonflies, this one here, if I got a piece of, let's use that, I think that might make it easier to see, you see where the cutouts are on there, you can see how it cut out bits there, there, there and there, and there's four holes, but that's not what I wanted, I thought that it made this look a bit biz busy um, where this is a lot lot cleaner so I changed that um, and also on here um, these bees were part of an experiment and I had coloured everything in yellow but obviously they don't have yellow wings they have more like um, translucent I suppose so I'll bring that back and the uh, design series paper I used on this one I think it's called urban something or other but there we go there's today's card I was pleased with how the beehive came out um, and that's what I really wanted to share with you so I hope you liked today's card many thanks for joining me if you have any questions or any comments to make please leave them in the box below as I say um, YouTube don't allow me to put uh, 
the sizes and the products on the screen but they will all still be in the box below. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that are featured here um, the it, at the moment it is till stock while stocks last and the three stamp sets that I use for the sentiments you may still be able to get them um, otherwise everything else is available um, and I will put a link to my 24-7 shop in the um, box below as well if you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload another one which is normally on Wednesdays and Sundays please subscribe to my YouTube channel I think that's probably about all I need to say. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.